So here I've got a Kodak Retina 2, the Type 142, which was the second of the Retina 2 models to be made. The first one was an ill-fated effort with actually had a lever wind, but uh, it was over-specified and under-engineered and it didn't fare well and was quickly withdrawn from the market and replaced with a traditional knob film advance model which is this one. It shared some of the quite a lot of similarities but uh, the film advance was certainly quite different. So this camera uh, has come to me for a service. It's complete and working. Uh, this is the one that I removed the Zeiss bumps from the camera back and I'm about to service the rest of the camera now. So I'll show you as I strip this thing down and uh, see if I can remember to point out the salient points as we go through the process. Right, to remove the rewind knob on these, you may know that this model the rewind knob, the shaft has got a cut out through it and that's because this is where you look. This is the rangefinder window at the back here. So it has to have a cut out so that you can actually see through the window. It also means that the shaft must lock into position under normal circumstances which requires that when it is locked into position that the end of the spool here, the fork that would connect to your film spool, is free to rotate when you are advancing the film, otherwise the film just wouldn't move. And when you rewind the film, you move your rewind lever at the end here, pull the back up into pull the knob up into position, or you don't actually, you leave the knob at the same height. I shouldn't have said that. You hold the rewind lever across and it allows a pull to drop into the mechanism up here which connects the rewind knob and the fork at the bottom. And you only raise the knob of course to actually take the film cassette back out of the camera. So this is quite a complex little mechanism. Um, and commonly it doesn't work, and usually it doesn't work because someone has taken it apart. You remove the knob here by taking out the two screws, one either side at the top. And that holds in place a J-shaped spring, which activates a pawl, which connects, allows the fork here to couple to the knob in the correct position. Quite commonly people take the camera apart possibly to play with the rangefinder or just because they're inquisitive or because there's some other fault in the camera. They're faced with this J-shaped spring they don't know where it came from they don't know how to put it back even if they do know where it came from so they leave it out and of course leaving it out that's a fine trick. The camera otherwise functions the uh, knob locks into place as it should do, but this piece just freewheels. It freewheels regardless of the position of the rewind tab at the end here, which I must should mention that's strongly spring loaded and it must be held against that spring tension while you are rewinding. It doesn't lock into place. But if that J-shaped hook is missing, the pawl is not engaged and you cannot rewind the film. In all other ways, the camera will function normally. As soon as I took my finger off that button and revolved the rewind knob, you see that it locked into position at the point where you could see through the shaft. So that's the un well, the most unusual feature of this model is certainly the rewind, and that's the piece that is most commonly not functioning when a camera comes to me for service if it has an unknown service history. If the camera has been used by the owner um, but has since um, ceased to work there's a good chance that all the parts will be present. If on the other hand the camera is new to the owner 
is one that they picked up from somewhere and would like to have service, there's a very high probability that that spring will be missing and the camera isn't going to function. Anyway, I'll need to take this thing apart, so I'll have to gather some tools. Alright, the rewind knob. Two screws. Alright, two screws, the knob, and put this down here so you can see it. The J shaped spring hook, the part that's most commonly missing from this model. So our rewind knob dealt with. The advanced knob we need to move next. The advanced knob is left hand threaded and to get this off you have to stop this shaft from rotating. I've got a spanner made to do that job. Hatch slides in into the slots. Turning the knob clockwise unscrews it. Now, I got that off just twisting it with my fingers, no fight at all. Which tells me that the camera has been serviced before, or possibly more accurately, the camera has been taken apart before, not necessarily serviced. One screw either end on the top cover. and the shutter release button. I'll see if it'll come off with my fingers. It won't. Options for removing it. You could use a tool like this. It's a pair of pliers. They've been modified. This one's made to actually grip rewind buttons on the Retina 3C models and 2A models but it would also do this job and an alternative is to use something like this uh, cheap crimp lug pliers nice rounded jaws there and you basically you just need to break it loose it usually doesn't take much And there's the release button, complete with it. The, look what looks like the top half of the shaft. It's a long release button. It's not just a tiny button on the top of a shaft. The top cover should just lift off. And it does. So underneath the top cover, I'll just open the front up so the camera will stay where it's put. What have we got under here? We have the frame counter the dial on the frame counter this component is held in here, the rangefinder arm is actually blocking us from lifting that off by itself but the support for the frame counter has got two screws so we can remove those screws lift that whole piece off and we come to the film advance components here this is quite a complex little mechanism uh, take great note what I normally do is if I'm faced with a job like this I would normally get out my digital camera and make sure I have plenty of pictures showing me where the various springs couple to and how the levers are arranged relative to each other. 
but this model I'm fairly familiar with so I'm going to skip that the shutter release shaft here should lift straight out I'll unhook this spring take out this screw and remove those components screw has a large head, quite a fine thread these components will probably lift out together I'll unhook that spring so they're not uh, sprung loaded Yeah, there they come. There's two components together there. This component has two jobs. The top piece, that little spike on the top of it, moves the frame counter. This other componentry down the bottom here is to meter the amount of film that runs through the camera at any given time when you're moving from one frame to the next All right. so we have a lever at the back here and I'll remove that take out its screw we have this, this is our rewind lever if you like here held by a single screw lift that out this little gear can come out that's just a opinion now this spring here typically that gets in the way so I'm going to remove this screw post that it's mounted on and just lift that spring out complete taking note here that what's here and what isn't there's a little washer here which sat underneath that gear take note of that that it sat down on that over that post we have two ratchets here the teeth run in opposite directions so take note of which one is sitting at the top and which one is sitting at the bottom and we'll see if I can lift those off there is a washer in between them, a spacer there's the lower one have three screws holding the guide bush for the film advance here to the body it's not at all uncommon with old cameras to find that the screws are loose these ones are actually not very loose they're quite uh, they're still doing the job well this should lift out basically here's our shaft and here's the bush yeah, there's no anti-backup spring or anything on there that's very, just a simple arrangement and at this point we can lift out the film spool which is a bit dirty and greasy but otherwise unremarkable and what do we come to now Oh, just about come to the range finder I'm just checking this because there's a couple of arrangements with this model visible through this hole in the body is a screw that couples the arm from the focus mechanism here to the arm on the range finder
that screw has to come out. It's a shoulder screw. It's unlike anything else on the camera. And it's worth taking great pains not to lose that. There it is. The spring loading on that rangefinder pulled that arm back and of course took this took the screw loose with it. Now I want to see if I can lift this rangefinder out to make life a bit easier for myself. I'm going to disconnect its return springs. There are two springs. Take note of where they came from. And the direction they fit over their various posts. I can't quite see whether this is going to be a straightforward job or a difficult job. Um, if it's straightforward, I'll be able to remove three screws from the rangefinder here, holding it to the casting. And with a bit of wriggling, I'll be able to lift the rangefinder off the camera body. If it's an earlier example, the hole in the top of the body isn't big enough and you can't do that. Here's our third screw here. I must say, these screws are very tight, unusually so. It's worth taking pains to keep your fingers off this glass on the rangefinder. And in this case, there's no cut out there for me to lift that out by the looks of it. I'll leave that in place until after I have uh, removed the bellows and the shutter, I think. So I'll make removing the door and then the shutter and the focus mount my next task. Right, I want to remove the leather from the bottom of the camera because I need to get to the hinge screw. So I'll start here. The surround for the tripod bush can come off. Two screws, chrome brass, easily damaged. It's not at all uncommon for them to be a little bit bashed about so that often the screw slots are either clogged with rubbish um, or just blurred right over so that you can't get the screwdriver in very easily. Here we have the depth of field dial. This camera, the uh, wording on the depth of field scale is in German, which tells me that the camera would have been made for the domestic German market, not for export to the English speaking market. Let's see if I can encourage the leather off the bottom of the camera. quite well stuck. There's some quite pronounced Zeiss bumps which doesn't surprise me. I'll just find a another scalpel I think. This leather is fairly thin. It's uh, not as thin as the leather on the back door but it's thinner than the leather on the front panels.
it's worth uh, attempting to get the leather off entirely even if you just need to peel it back to get to some component down here for example it's worth taking it off completely because otherwise it's extremely difficult to glue it back down in place without there being an obvious crease across the point where the you peeled the leather back to. Well this leather is uh, very thin and very stretchy and uh, may or may not cause me grief trying to get it to glue back down we shall see the glue is extremely tenacious um, you can see that effectively these are all leather fibers left on the body and it appears that the battery is going flat on this camera so I'll pause here for a second and change them all right let's see how we go Okay, the leather's almost released. I'm just getting this little piece from around the front door release button loose. Right, you can see that there's quite pronounced size bump here, and you can see the build up of rubbish on the inside. That'll all need to be cleaned away. You can see where it was there. However, what we're interested in at the moment is access to the hinge screw for the door 